left off yesterday where we still have the same characters. Hank and Frankie, Ashley, Miss Adolf, Nick the Tick, Emily and Robert. We also have Hank's parents, Dan and Randy Zipser. We left off just yesterday where they were at school and Hank had just gotten handed the brown envelope. And it was not a thin envelope, it was a thick brown envelope. And only one other kid in the class got one too and that was Luke Whitman. And they know that Luke is not the super student, so not a super student, so they're thinking that, um, or Hank is thinking that he's probably got some bad news in that envelope about him having to repeat the fourth grade. Back with chapter 16. Hey, what's wrong, Hanky? Papa Pete asked me, rubbing my head as I buried into the strawberry red jogging suit he always wore to pick me up. It stinks, I said, wiping my tears and running my and wiping my nose on his sweatshirt. I hate to confess that I wipe my nose on his shirt, but it's true. And I wouldn't lie to you, not even when it concerns snot. What stinks, Papa Pete asked. My jogging suit? Sorry, Hanky, I just came from bowling. I might stink a little. No, school stinks, I said. Fourth grade stinks, and now I have to do it all over again. It's going to stink even more. Who said you have to do the fourth grade again? Papa Pete asked, reaching into his pocket and handing me his big plaid handkerchief. Well, no one yet, but they're going to say that I just know it. But they haven't said it yet, whoever they are, right? No. Well, then there's nothing to worry about. I have a rule, Hanky. If it hasn't happened, don't worry about it. Papa Pete always has a make a may always has a way of making you feel better no matter what's wrong. Last year when I cut my thumb and had to go to the emergency room to get stitches, he took the doctor's rubber glove and blew it up into a big balloon and played balloon volleyball with me in the waiting room. Since I could only use my left hand, Papa Pete did the same. How many other grandfathers do you know that would do that? Frankie and Ashley came running out of the main door, and when they saw with me with Papa Pete, they dashed over to us. Zengawi, zip, said Frankie. You disappeared. Yeah, you forgot this, Ashley said, handing me the thick brown envelope. What's in there, asked Papa Pete. He was busy giving Ashley and Frankie a big pinch on the cheek, which is his way of saying hello. Well, papers for my teacher, I answered. Trust me, they're not going to make my dad very happy. I happen to have just come from your father, and I can tell you this, darling grandson. He is, at this very moment, a very happy man. And your darling mother, otherwise known as my darling daughter, is also a very happy girl. Papa Pete, Mrs. Zipser is not a girl, Ashley giggled. She's almost 40 years old. Well, to me, she'll always be my little girl, Papa Pete flashed me a smile. Just like you, Hanky, you'll always be my favorite oldest grandson. But he's your only oldest grandson, Ashley pointed out. Oh, I hadn't even realized that, Papa Pete said. Papa Pete, of course, was teasing. Ashley, but does she, she doesn't always get her. Papa Pete was teasing Ashley, but she doesn't always get his jokes. She's not too swift on the grandparent joke connections since her grandma isn't much on jokes. Why are my mom and dad in such a good mood, I asked. Your father wants to tell you himself. He asked if I would come and get you and bring you to the Crunchy Pickle. He's helping your mom and Carlos get a big order out for the big party for Mr. and Mrs. Tall Chief's anniversary party. Well, can we come, Ashley asked. To the party? I don't know. Let's ask the tall chiefs. They seem pretty, like, pretty friendly people. No, I'm not talking about the tall chiefs, Ashley laughed. I'm asking if we can come to the Crunchy Pickle with you. Well, only if you'll let me buy a black and white cookie, said Papa Pete. Deal. Frankie and Ashley both said at the same time. They took off running down Columbus Avenue. I looked at the brown envelope. I figured whatever bad news was inside, that envelope was still going to be there after I ate the cookie. I stuffed the envelope into my backpack and took off after my pals. Chapter 17. When we reached the Crunchy Pickle, the whole crew was working at triple speed to get the order out for the tall chief party. Carlos was arranging pickles and olives. Vladdy was putting fancy toothpicks in the sandwich halves because his sandwiches are so big that they need toothpicks to hold them together. My mom was spooning her high-protein, low-carb, no taste pretend potato salad into the reusable, reusable recyclable containers she had made especially for our deli. My dad was trying to add up the bill while looking for his glasses that were sitting right on top of his head. 
Papa Pete tiptoed over the glass counter where we display the cookies and other baked goods like marble cake and chocolate eclairs. He picked up the forest biggest, the four biggest black and white cookies that he could find. Then he poured himself a cup of coffee and got each of us a small carton of milk from the refrigerator case. You need to have milk from your for your black and whites so you can dunk them. We sat down in the turquoise leather corner booth and had ourselves the after school snack of your dreams. If you're ever in a place where they have those big round chuck cookies that have half white frosting and half chocolate, eat one immediately. You won't be sorry. They are pretty good. I had them in Philadelphia when I went there. Hey, niños, Carlos called as he passed our booth with, uh, with the order all loaded up on his bicycle. You clean me out of my black and white cookies. Save some for the customers. My mom held open the heavy glass door and Carlos jumped on his bike and rode off to make his delivery. He should work in the circus because he's got great balance. My dad, who had a real sparkle in my, his eye, immediately grabbed a piece of paper from the counter and practically skipped over to our booth. He pulled up a chair from one of the neighboring tables. Do you know what this says, son? He asked me, pointing to some words he had written down on a piece of paper. I looked at the paper, but it looked like a random scribbling to me. I thought I saw an F at the beginning of the scribbling. Flipper, frisbee, fork, I guess? saying the first three words that began with the letter F. Who knows, maybe I was right. Hank, that doesn't make sense, my dad said. Frankie leaned over my shoulder and glanced at the paper. It says, Filbert Funk, he whispered to me. Well, that's what I was just going to say, I said to my dad. Or, my dad. And do you know who Filbert Funk is? My dad asked. My dad doesn't like it when he asks a question and you say, I don't know. He says that I don't know is a lazy man's answer. So I've gotten used to taking a guess when he asks me something, even if I have the slightest clue about it. Philbert Funk was an English man who invented funk music in November of 1974, I said, without skipping a beat. No, Hank, that's a good guess, though, said my dad. Philbert Funk is one of my heroes. He was the younger brother of Isaac K. Funk. Oh, Isaac! He must have been the guy who invented funk music in the November of 1974. Frankie and Ashley cracked up. Needless to say, my dad didn't. He was on a funk brother's roll, and he didn't want to be interrupted by a dumb joke. Isaac K. Funk, along with his partner, Adam Wagnalls, published the Standard Dictionary of the English Language in 1894, my dad explained. It's one of everybody's favorite books. Except mine, I said, which was the understatement of the year. I can't stand dictionaries. I can't sound out, sound out the word that I'm looking up, so I can never find it buried in all of those dictionary pages. You try looking up a word in the dictionary if you're dyslexic like I am. The letters slip around on the page, and before you know it, there are letters floating in front of your eyes like synchronized swimming in the Olympics. Oops, there I go again. Getting off on the subject. Sorry, it won't happen again. Anyways, Isaac Funk's younger brother, Phil, Philbert wrote and edited the first crossword puzzle dictionary ever published, my dad said. He looked so happy with that little tidbit of information that I thought his face was going to light up and start to buzz. Wow, Dad, I said, and because I couldn't think of anything else to say, I said it again. Wow, Dad! By now, my mom had joined us in the booth. She looked very happy herself. I wondered why both of my parents were so pumped up about the Funk Brothers. And you know what the truly exciting part is, my dad said? Guess where Philbert Funk was born. I don't know, Blowing Rock, North Carolina, North Carolina, I said. No, Hank. Philbert Funk was born in Philadelphia. My dad broke into, the, into a grin the size of the Brooklyn Bridge. I just happened to read that this morning in the Crossword Puzzle Monthly magazine that I get. I wasn't sure where this conversation was going, but I kind of had a hunch, and I kind of liked my hunch. I liked it a lot. Did you say Philadelphia, I said? As in the place where the Stone Cold Rock concert is? Yes, Hank, my dad said. When I mentioned this little fat known fact to your mother, do you know what she did? She called and arranged for us to get a private tour of Philbert Funk's home in Philadelphia. I'm going to be able to sit in the very chair where he created the crossword puzzle dictionary. 
and your father and I are going to tour the funk house in the afternoon, my mom said, and he said that if I go with him, he will go with me to the Stone Cold Rock concert in the evening. How's that for a give and take marriage? She leaned over and planted a big kiss on my dad's cheek. Gross. I could feel Ashley and Frankie kicking me under the table. I glanced over at them. Boy, did they look happy. Ashley's eyebrows were wiggling up and down, a thing that she does when she's trying to keep a secret. And Frankie had such a big grin on his face that his dimple almost popped out. It looked like a moon crater. So you guys are going to Philadelphia after all, I ask? On Cousin Ralphie's tour, the Stone Cold Rock concert? They nodded. Hank, your generosity has allowed me to realize a lifetime dream, my dad said. Imagine my behind in Filbert Funk's favorite chair. It is pure, absolute joy, Hank. A three-letter word for happiness. Well, isn't this all so wonderful, Hank, my mom said. Oh, she had no idea how wonderful this was.